So the college football playoff rankings finally came out. And for the first time this year, we have rankings that actually mean something. And today, we've got to ask the question, did they get it right? Because when we look at this list, there are some teams that are surprising. And we're going to go through, at the very least, the top 10. But we also need to talk about why this season will sort all of this out for us. But before we can, as always, y'all know the drill. I need to hear from you. Hop down to the comments, give me a Y for yes and for no. Do you believe the college football playoff rankings are correct? And if the answer is no, let me know what you believe the correct ranking should be. I can't wait to hear from you. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Hit that bell notification. I do constant college football content. You don't want to miss any of it. And if you enjoyed this content, be sure to like and comment down below. Those interactions, they may seem small, but they're huge for content creators such as myself and both getting picked up and maintained by the YouTube algorithm. But having said all that, let's jump right into this. And as I said, we're at least going to go through the top 10 and we're going to start at the top where Tennessee debuts at number one. At number two, we have Ohio State. At number three, we have Georgia. Four comes Clemson. At five is Michigan. Six comes in at Alabama. Seven is TCU. Eight, Oregon. Nine, USC. And finally, at 10, we have LSU. And we'll start at the top. Because I'm going to be very honest, I think it's hard to deny Tennessee their number one ranking. If you're a Georgia fan, you probably feel like Georgia should be ranked number one. If you're an Ohio State fan, you probably feel like Ohio State should be ranked number one. And if you're a Tennessee fan, you probably feel like Tennessee should be ranked number one. From the outside looking in, I think it's very hard to deny Tennessee this number one spot. And if we take this list at face value, Tennessee's got the best win because they beat Alabama, who sits at number six just outside the top five. So with that in mind, it does make sense that Tennessee is number one. But like I said in the intro, the season is going to sort all of this out for us. And it's going to start this weekend when Tennessee will take on Georgia. And that's going to give us a ton of answers right then and there. Georgia's a team that their best win is probably the Oregon win to begin the season with. And when that happened, a lot of people wrote off Oregon. I think a lot of people haven't been paying attention to just how good the Ducks have been since that game. But once again, Georgia's going to get an opportunity against the number one team in the nation. So though they didn't debut as number one, though they didn't debut as number two, you have an opportunity this weekend to set the record straight if you disagree with it. The number two team instead of Georgia is Ohio State. And if you're an Ohio State fan, you probably feel like this is 100% right. If not, you should be number one. Because Ohio State and Georgia, those are the two teams that when you look on social media, when you look at a lot of these message boards, it's kind of an argument back and forth as to which team should have been number one. But at the end of the day, like I said, Ohio State has still got a big test in front of them in Michigan, who comes in at number five on this list. So that's all going to be sorted out. And if you are a Michigan fan, for instance, and you feel like you should be a top four team, well, you still have the opportunity to do so with that Ohio State win. Clemson at number four is interesting, I must admit. And yes, Clemson has had some ranked wins against Syracuse and NC State, but when I've watched Clemson this year, they've been getting wins, but they haven't exactly looked like a powerhouse in doing so. So do I believe Clemson will be able to maintain their ranking? Well, when you look at the rest of their schedule, if you asked me what team on the top five had the best opportunity of maintaining their ranking, it must be Clemson. Because like I said, Ohio State and Michigan, they're going to sort that out. Tennessee and Georgia, they're going to sort that out. The only team you look at and think this team is probably safe until the ACC championship is Clemson. So we're not really going to figure out who the Tigers are truly until that championship game, but it's going to be interesting to watch how they continue to grow. At number five comes Michigan, and Michigan has been a very impressive team this year. We have got to give credit where it's due. Whenever we look at the Wolverines, their rushing attack is as dangerous as any attack in college football, and their quarterback continues to grow week by week. So they're a team we've got to watch. Like I already said, if you feel like you should be ranked higher and you're a Michigan fan, you still have that opportunity in front of you when you play Ohio State. At number six, we have the Alabama Crimson Tide, and I think this is going to be an area where some people raise their eyebrows because right behind Alabama sits undefeated TCU. And what this tells you is the committee is saying that they believe if Alabama and TCU played today, Alabama would be the victor. But the good news is if you're an Alabama fan, you still have the opportunity to win some games, prove that you deserve to be in the college football playoffs, and as long as you make the SEC championship, you could get a chance to redeem the loss against Tennessee, or you could get a chance to redeem the national championship loss against the Georgia Bulldogs. Either way, if you win out, your season will figure itself out, which is why I brought this up in the intro. At seven, we have TCU, and I know there are going to be some Big 12 fans that feel like TCU is a little low, and look, 
you've got an argument there. TCU has been as impressive as any team in the nation. And interestingly enough, whenever they commented on TCU, they said they were looking for a complete team. Now, I'm not going to go super deep in the argumentation there. I think we should be looking at the best teams. And TCU, I think, has been one of the most impressive teams all year. So it's going to be interesting to see how they finish out the year. At number eight is Oregon. At number nine is USC. And at number 10, we have LSU. And we'll start with Oregon. Oregon took a bad loss. I think a lot of people wrote them off right then and there when they took that loss to Georgia. But if you've been watching the Ducks ever since that point, they've just continued to get better. And they currently sit as the number eight team in the nation. So if you are a Georgia fan, you at some level do feel like, hey, we have one of the best wins in college football over a team that the college football playoff committee just put at number eight. Shouldn't we be number two? It's a legitimate argument. But like I said, I'm not really worried about that argument when you're going to get the opportunity to play the number one team in the nation this weekend. I digress. Oregon's a team we've got to watch because if they make it to the Pac-12 championship, watch out. They could continue making some big moves. And number nine, another Pac-12 team being USC. And this is one I find a little bit interesting. Because when we look at this, Utah just beat USC a few weeks ago. And y'all know how much respect I have for Kyle Whittingham and the program that he runs. But for USC to be number nine really tells you what the committee thinks of their upside. Especially when we look and LSU comes in at number 10. Now, those two teams may seem like they have absolutely nothing in common. But let me paint the picture for you. I bring that up and I bring up the fact that USC lost to Utah to point out the fact that they have USC ranked above Utah. But if we look at number 10, they have LSU. At number 11 is Ole Miss. The reason I paint that picture is because it's kind of the inverse logic that the committee used to put USC ahead of Utah. In which the case of Utah beating USC, they said, okay, even though USC lost the heads up to Utah, they have the better record, so we're going to give them the nod ahead of Utah. In the case of LSU beating Ole Miss, they said, okay, Ole Miss, you have the better record, you lost the head-to-head, so we're going to give credence to the team that beat you in a head-to-head. I get it. LSU beat down Ole Miss in that head-to-head, so that certainly needs to be weighed, but at the same time... It is just interesting. I don't necessarily think I have a complaint about it. It just is something that got my attention instantly when I looked at this list. So the question has to be asked, like I did in the beginning. Do you agree with this? And personally, whether I think people agree or not, the beautiful thing about this is college football is going to sort this all out when we look at the big games remaining. We've talked about what Ohio State has to do when they have to play Michigan. We've talked about Tennessee playing Georgia. You talk about USC playing UCLA, then the Pac-12 championship. For Clemson, there's the ACC championship. And if you're an Alabama Crimson Tide fan, you have to take on LSU. You have to take on Ole Miss. Then you have to go, if you win out those games, plus Auburn, to the SEC Championship where you'll face either Tennessee or Georgia proving and paving your way to the college football playoff. This season's going to be filled with fireworks, guys. It has been filled with fireworks from the offseason to the kickoff, from the kickoff till this point, and I have no reason to believe those fireworks are going to stop anytime soon. I can't wait to see how the season ends, but more importantly, I can't wait to hear from all of you. Hop down to the comments. Let me know what you think about our first playoff rankings. That's it. See you.